Hey guys, welcome to question FM84 of the Further Maths Sharpened Study Guide. So this, uh, this question here is getting us to do a little bit of uh, interpretation around a scatter plot and a regression line. So it's already been fitted for us. This isn't obviously the exact graph here. I've just got this as a, like a little visual aid. You guys will have the, uh, the exact graph with you either as a download or in your book. So let's jump straight in. In a scatter plot, in a scatter plot below, average weekly time on Netflix in hours is plotted against, so that would be this part here, in hours, is plotted against the average amount of tasty snacks consumed in a week in grams. That's part here. For 17 different towns. A least squares regression line is fitted to the data. So that's similar to what your graph will look like. Obviously not exactly, but you get the idea. Uh, the next part here says the equation of the least squares regression line for predicting the amount of tasty snacks consumed from time spent watching Netflix is as so. So this here, tasty snacks is equal to 275.6 plus 47 times the time on Netflix. So question A wants us to know, wants us to figure out what the independent sorry, not the independent, the explanatory variable is. So which one is explaining the result? And uh, as you guys know, either you either know this because the uh, x-axis is always the explanatory variable, or you know that the x value in your equation is going to be the explanatory variable. So this, in this case, it's going to be, A is going to be time spent on... Netflix. So super straightforward question there, and it makes sense that this is the uh, the uh, in explanatory variable because the more time you spend watching Netflix, the more likely you are to uh, indulge in a tasty snack. Part B. Part B wants us to complete a sentence. Uh, complete the following statement by filling in the missing information. From the, so I'll get you guys to read from your book or your download. From the least squares regression line equation, it can be concluded that for these towns, on average, the amount of tasty snacks consumed increases by blank grams for each one hour increase in time spent watching Netflix. So to take you guys through a bit of a practical scenario, we're using this equation here to figure out how much um, this line is increasing by, or how much our tasty snacks is going up by on average for each hour of Netflix um, spent, well, each hour spent watching Netflix goes up. So if we start, if we say, for example, here that we spend zero time on Netflix, then this 47 is going to be times by zero, equals zero, we're going to have 275.6 grams of tasty snacks being consumed watching zero hours of Netflix. Now from here, if we watch one hour of Netflix, so the difference between the zero and one being we're increasing it by one hour, it's gonna be 47 times one, which is 47, plus 275.6. So every time we watch an hour of Netflix, our answer is going to go up by another 47, which is gonna actually increase on this end by 47 grams. So our question here for part B, the blank space, so the leading up to it, um, on average, the amount of tasty snacks consumed increases by, so by 47 grams, which is already written there for you, but I'm gonna write it right out here, for each one hour increase in time spending, spent watching Netflix. So for every hour that we go up over here in time on Netflix, it's gonna increase this, our overall value in tasty snacks by 47, because one times 47 is 47, two times 47, it's going to give us 94, which is another 47 on top. And every time we add one hour here, it's going to add another 47. So that's part B. Part C. So part C here says, uh, oh, we've got this broken up into two pieces. So CI says use the least squares regression line equation to predict the average amount of tasty snacks consumed in grams in a town where the average time spent on Netflix each week is 2.2 hours. So if we use our equation above here, so uh, our tasty snacks, I'm just gonna abbreviate as TS, is equal to 275.6 plus 47 times 2.2, 2, 
that's going to end up being 275.6 plus 103.4, which is going to be equal to 379 grams. So in a town that watches on average 2.2 hours per week of uh, Netflix, we can, well, we predict that they are going to eat 300, well, predict that on average they're going to have 379 grams of tasty snacks. Um, now, the next part is, is interesting and comes up a lot actually in these uh, exams. They ask for explanations around this every now and then. So, the next part of the question says, the prediction made in part CI, so the prediction that we just made there, uh, is not likely to be reliable. Explain why. Now, the reason it's not likely to be reliable, I don't actually have it written here, but our values start just before five. So just before five hours or just after four hours of uh, Netflix. So all of our values are above four hours um, of average time spent watching Netflix. Whereas this prediction that we've made is on uh, basically the basis of 2.2 hours. So somewhere down here, we're trying to predict out here, which means that we're extrapolating um, because we don't actually have any evidence that this regression line holds true outside of the range of data that we've been given. So a possible answer might be something lines, along the lines of um, making the prediction in part CI, so the one we did before, uh, involves extrapolation to determine the regression equation. There is no evidence to suggest that the relationship continues outside of the data given in the dot plot, meaning the mathematical model established by the regression equation can't be relied upon outside the range of the presented data set. So what they're saying is our prediction is trying to be made out here. We've got all of our data in this range here. So we're just kind of guessing that this regression equation holds true outside of it and it's not really reliable to do that. Guys, if you have any questions about the uh, problems that we've just solved, please feel free to drop those questions in the comments below or send a direct message to our Facebook page, Triumph Tutoring, uh, on Facebook. And someone will be sure to give you a hand.